developed on that front yet. Sadly, no, Biana, we have not uh, been able to achieve consular access. Nobody from our embassy um, has been able to meet with him. We are continuing to work on that, of course, uh, and will until we can get that uh, consular access to ascertain for ourselves how, how he's doing uh, and make sure that, uh, that we have that uh, connection. But no, we haven't, uh, we haven't been able to gain access to him at this time. So there's no engagement uh, with Evan, no update or status as to where he is and how he is doing? I'm afraid not. I mean, we're, we're doing the best we can to get information uh, from uh, the Russian government, obviously, uh, as much as we can. Uh, and we uh, have been in touch with the family through the State Department, uh, and we'll, con we'll continue those uh, lines of communication. But right now, I, I just don't have much to, to update you on. Of course, we are thinking about his family and his colleagues Absolutely. right now. The FSB, in their statement, said that Mr. Gershkovich is, quote, suspected of spying in the interests of the American government. And this is what really struck me, John. Uh, Kremlin's uh, spokesperson and press secretary, Dmitry Peskov, said that he was, quote, caught red-handed. These are very provocative and, I would say, deliberate words. I can't imagine that this would not have happened without the sign-off of Vladimir Putin. Do you agree with that assessment? We can't uh, delink, we can't specifically uh, link Mr. Putin to, to this arrest. That said, uh, he, as you well know, has uh, really, uh, really clamped down on independent media reporting uh, in Russia, uh, and just shutting down outlets, uh, kicking some out. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a very, very tough environment for any kind of independent, uh, independent journalism to, to occur. Uh, so he has certainly set the conditions uh, where uh, it's very difficult uh, for free and independent reporters to actually do their job. And just to put a fine point on it, you didn't ask, but uh, the, the claims, these espionage claims against Mr. Gershkovich are absolutely ludicrous. Uh, he was a working journalist for the Wall Street yes. Journal, uh, and we want to see him released. Yeah, and the administration noted yesterday they called these claims, Karine Jean-Pierre called them ridiculous. Uh, I know that the State Department is in its process, which is routine when an American is detained. To, to get to the actual words uh, and being able to label this wrongfully detained, where does that process stand? I, I would have to refer you to the State Department. They do have a process that the, they, they put in place when, uh, when we have Americans detained overseas where they, they take, take a look at the circumstances. Uh, and I, I don't really know where they are in that process. Uh, it is very much driven by individual cases. So uh, it's not driven by us. The specific timeline necessarily uh, it's really driven by you know taking a look at, at each case individually and, and th they'll do that and they'll do that in, in the appropriate manner I'm, I'm, we're sure of that in the meantime uh, it, it's very clear uh, that uh, from everything we've been able to glean that he was simply uh, uh, picked up for being a reporter and, and again in a country uh, where being a reporter uh, can be a very dangerous thing uh, and we want to see him released. We want to see him released right away, immediately. That's, he, he does not belong to be detained uh, for, for doing it, the job of a reporter in, in a foreign country. Let me read to you what his employer, the Wall Street Journal, has said in their editorial and what they believe is the government's duty now in response. They called his detainment uh, another example of Russia taking a journal hostage. Thuggish leaders keep doing thuggish things if they think they will pay no price. Expelling Russia's ambassador to the U.S., as well as all Russian journalists, would be the minimum to expect. The U.S. government's first duty is to protect its citizens, and too many governments now believe that they can arrest and imprison Americans with impunity. Uh, President Biden was asked just today if he plans to expel Russian journalists or diplomats. He said there are no plans right now. Why not? We are taking a look at this case obviously very closely. Our focus right now, Biana, is getting Evan out of there, getting getting him released and working towards getting him uh, released. And so that's where the focus is right now. Uh, and I don't have anything to add to what the president said in terms of uh, any consequences that will come from this. I think it's important to remember a couple of things. Number one, uh, this is not a new tactic for Mr. Putin. Uh, he has he has uh, uh, detained uh, American citizens and citizens from other countries uh, in a routine way uh, on many times sham charges. Uh, and that's number one. Number two, uh, President Biden never forgets uh, Americans that are detained overseas. He has a whole team here at the State Department, at the National Security Council, dedicated to getting those folks home. Uh, and we're going to do that in Evan's case. We're going to work just as hard for Evan as we are for everybody else. Uh, but each case has got to be looked at uh, individually. The last thing I'll say here is 
This is not the time for Americans to be in Russia. If you're in Russia now, uh, whether it's on business or leisure, whatever kind of travel, you need to leave now. This is not a good place for you to be uh, in Russia, even if you are a working journalist. Uh, Russia is a, is a hostile environment for, for American citizens right now, uh, and it's time to go if you're there. So as you know, there are several international journalists that are currently working inside Russia, including Americans, including, you know, we have colleagues who are maybe not from America, but other Western countries reporting from Russia as well. Is the administration's take now in, in, that they should leave? Uh, we can't speak for other countries uh, and certainly wouldn't do that. Th those are uh, th those are sovereign uh, nation states that uh, can speak for, for their own citizens and we would leave it at that. What we're saying is, and, and the State Department's been extremely clear about this the, on their website, they've got a level four advisory out. Uh, Russia is not a safe country for Americans to travel to or to be in. If you are in Russia, again, we urge you to leave immediately. Want it? Get it on Hubtel. Hubtel is everything you. You have said that you do not know if this detention was retaliatory or, or perhaps uh, Vladimir Putin seeking a prisoner swap, which he's been known to do in the past. Many experts who follow him believe that's in fact part of his plan right now. Uh, what is the U.S.'s view on this? Is there anybody that the U.S. is currently detaining who would be able to be swapped w with, with Evan? We don't know uh, exactly uh, what other motives beyond what they've said publicly uh, uh, for uh, arresting and detaining uh, Evan is. We, we just we don't have any evidence that this was some sort of retaliatory or measure or that it is in fact uh, a ploy by Mr. Putin to do a prisoner swap. And I won't get ahead of where we are on the process here. We're going to work to get uh, Evan released just like we're going to work to get uh, Paul Whelan released and any other uh, detained Americans uh, overseas. Each case is individual, each case is, is specific. Uh, and so I certainly wouldn't talk about what tactics might be in play or what options are before us uh, as we continue to try to work to learn more about Evan's case. Our main priority right now, obviously we'd like to see him released right now, of course, he doesn't need to be detained, but our main priority is getting access to him physically, consular access, so we can ascertain how he's doing and, uh, and try to address any immediate needs that he might have. If you have any developments, please do keep us posted. I do want to move on to the war in Ukraine in general because there is growing concern about what, in fact, the U.S. policy is vis-a-vis -vis the war in Ukraine. Uh, from the get-go, the, the Biden administration has said that, that it is about liberating uh, Ukraine and making sure Russia uh, leaves I I its boundaries there and nothing would be done without Ukraine involved. That having been said, there is speculation that going forward and any sort of assistance and policy really depends a lot on this upcoming offensive that is expected from Ukraine. Is that in fact the case? H how important and pivotal will this upcoming offensive be in the decision-making process? I do not want to speak for future operations of the Ukrainian military. I would never do that. I wouldn't even do that for American future operations. Uh, we do expect that the Russians are going to go on the offense here, uh, try to go on the offense here in, in weeks and months ahead, and it's likely that the fighting will get more vicious and more bloody. We, more bloody. We want to make sure that the Ukrainians are able to defend themselves against what we anticipate will be Russian offensive operations, and if they choose, to be able to successfully conduct offensive operations uh, of their own. And so that's what's been behind all these recent packages of support we provided. You've seen a lot of ammunition going in the recent weeks. You'll continue yeah. to see that. We want to make sure that and, they're ready for those uh, offensive operations if they choose to conduct them. And John, just to be clear, it's the Ukrainian um, offensive that I was actually referring to that, that's expected in the spring and the coming weeks ahead. How much is riding on Ukraine's success in terms of what position the Biden administration takes moving forward? Right. No, no, I, I, I definitely understood the question. What I, I don't want to talk about uh, any potential offensive operations conducted by the Ukrainians. That's for them to decide and for them to speak to. We just want to make sure that they're ready uh, to defend themselves. And if they choose to go on the offense, uh, to do it and do it successfully. And that's the key point. We want them to be successful on the battlefield so that 
if and when President Zelensky is ready to sit down at the negotiating table with Mr. Putin, and there's no signs that that's in the offing anytime uh, soon, uh, that he can be successful at the negotiating table too. We want him to have uh, as much strength going into those uh, discussions uh, as humanly possible. That's why we're focused on making sure that the Ukrainians continue to be. And, and Biana, they have been extraordinarily uh, successful on the battlefield. You know, they've clawed back more than 50% of the territory that Russia took from them in the early weeks and months of this war. We want to see that success continue, and that's what we're focused on. Is uh, the administration, in final question, factoring in perhaps the possibility that Vladimir Putin never wants to sit down at the negotiating table, earnestly at least? He certainly has shown no indication of that, has he? I mean, every everything that he has been doing, just matching uh, his actions uh, instead of his words. I mean, everything you can see is he wants to continue this war. He wants to continue to, to take away Ukraine's independence, their sovereignty. He wants to subsume Ukraine uh, into Russia. He doesn't want them to exist anymore. And the Ukrainians are fighting literally for their independence. We've seen no signs that Mr. Putin is, is willing to slack off, back off, or, or, or sit down and, and have any, any discussions. Uh, and, and you know what? It, We'd all love to see the war end, certainly as soon as possible. And if it has to end through a negotiated settlement, as you rightly said uh, when we started talking, nothing about Ukraine without Ukraine. Ukraine's got to be at the center of that discussion. They've got to be consulted. Their perspectives have to be viewed and understood. But Mr. Putin could end this war today just by pulling his troops out of Ukraine. Again, he's shown no signs of doing that, which is why we've got to continue to support Ukraine on the battlefield. All right, John Kirby, thank you.